Today's class continues on the theme of mixtures of strong acids and weak acids. And we'll also look at percent ionization calculations. Yesterday's homework question was find the pH of a 0 0.043 molar acetic acid solution, a weak acid. Uh, and then I added as well, calculate the percent ionization, show how the addition of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar concentration of HCl, a strong acid, would affect the pH of the solution and the percent ionization. Uh, so you'll see that um, the addition of a strong acid to a weak acid will suppress the ionization of the weak acid. It will drive the equilibrium to the left. If you recall from Le Chatelier's principle, the addition of H plus will push that equilibrium to the left. So the percent ionization we'll see will be diminished by the presence of a strong acid. The first part of the question is uh, to answer what the, pH, the resulting pH is for a solution of 0 0.043 molar acetic acid. I find it helps to draw a nice table. First of all, show the chemistry, show how the acid dissociates into acetate ion and uh, the proton. Here's your initial concentration. And then at the outset, before the acid dissociates, you have zero a molar concentration of acetate or hydrogen ions. Then a certain amount of X dissolves leaving you with 0 0.043 minus X, and the same amount X of acetate ions will appear, and same as the um, hydrogen ions. So at equilibrium, you'll have this, and these two values of X for the concentration of acetate and proton. Uh, so we can set up our equilibrium situation. Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, X squared over 0.043 minus X, and I start the calculation by assuming that the value of x is a lot smaller than 0 0.043. Whether or not that's completely true is not really that relevant if we're going to use the iterative method of calculating the final answer because it'll still converge onto the final answer. So I start, as it turns out, it's, it is, in this, in this case, it is true, so it won't really affect the answer if you were to stop the calculation at the first step. But we, we we rewrite the, equ the equilibrium equa equation with the minus x part missing because we've assumed that it's so small that it doesn't really affect this number. We solve for x and we find that the first value of x that we get is 8.79 times 10 to the minus 4. But then what we do is we continue the calculate. We could stop it here legitimately and still get a, a reasonably good answer. But I'd like to get the exact answer and I use the iterative method to uh, to achieve that. So I take this answer and I plug it back into this equation. So this is the value of x I plug into it. So what that does is uh, subtract a certain amount 0 0.043 from uh, a certain amount x from 0 0.043. We recalculate it all and we solve for the value of x. And we'll see that it changes the value of x slightly. Then we take this value, plug it back in here again. We keep on doing that. We repeat that about four times. We notice that each time the answer changes at a, at a decimal place that's further and further away. Uh, further and further down the readout, and it gets to the point where the readout of the calculator will no longer detect the change. And it'll be identical to, to the number you would get if you had to use the quadratic formula. And the purpose of the iterative method is again to slow down, uh, to, um, to avoid using the quadratic formula, which is a rather cumbersome way of calculating it, although there are calculators that will do that where you just answer, enter three numbers and you get to the right answer immediately. Nevertheless, it's, I like the method myself. Uh, I find it is a time saver most of the time. So the final answer we get after five iterations is 8.708. Please excuse the interruptions. Uh, teachers, please excuse your voice ball team for their doubleheader to meet Mr. Pedro in room 122. Thank you. I can edit that out. Anyway, at the fifth iteration, we get 8.708 times 10 to the minus 4 for our final H plus concentration. We calculate the, the, uh, log of the pH by entering it into the pH equation. pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H plus. We get 3.06 as the pH that results. To calculate percent ionization, we would use the uh, concentration of the conjugate base of the acid versus the initial acid concentration. So A over HA, if you like, multiply that by 100. So we, I continued the same problem. And I found that the H plus concentration is going to equal the acetate ion concentration, which equals 8.7 times 10 to the minus 4 when you stick to using the 
correct number of significant figures. You'll notice that the net correct number of significant figures is only two in this case, which produces no difference between the first iteration and the, and the last iteration of the pro calculation. But nevertheless, sometimes it is important enough to make a difference. The percent ionization of the acetic acid is 8.7 divided by 0 0.043 times 100, so it's 2% ionized under these conditions. Now let's see what happens if we mix a strong acid like hydrochloric acid under the same conditions. We're going to have the same amount of acetic acid present, but now we're going to add um, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter of hydrochloric acid. So we set up the same ice table showing the dissociation of acetic acid. It starts off at 0 0.043. The acetate concentration at the outset is zero, but we're starting with an initial condition uh, of H plus concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3. A certain amount X of this acid now dissociates, which subtracts a certain amount X from the 0 0.043. X of acetate ion appears, and X H plus is added to the original 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3. So at equilibrium, we have these conditions. We enter it into our equilibrium equation, and we'll find that uh, here it would be best to use the quadratic formula to solve it. So we enter the values into the quadratic formula where A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1.018 times 10 to the minus 3, and C is equal to negative 7.74 times 10 to the minus 7. You'll get two values from your calculator. One will be a negative value, which we discard because we can't have a negative concentration. This is the value we keep. That is the amount of H plus that forms due to the dissociation of the acetic acid. And we will add that to the amount that's already sitting in solution. Final result is that the total hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the concentration of hydrogen from hydrochloric acid plus the concentration that results from the further ionization of acetic acid. The total is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. We take the pH, we get 2.82. Compare that to the uh, 3.06 that we got the first time around. So the, the presence of a strong acid lowers the pH in addition to uh, suppressing the ionization. And the proof of that is when we do the percent ionization calculation, we find that the acid now is only 1.2% ionized. Why? Because the equilibrium has been pushed to the left by the presence of H plus from another source. Which brings us to the next type of calculation. The calculations involving sulfuric acid, and I, I call it the special case of sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid is known as a strong acid, and it is, but only for its first dissociation. And the second dissociation of bisulfate is actually a weak acid, so it's necessary to treat dilute solutions of sulfuric acid as though they were mixtures of a strong and a weak acid. You'll see the chemistry here. Here's sulfuric acid dissociating 100% to form hydrogen ions and the bisulfate anion. That's strong acid behavior. But then the bisulfate anion also dissociates further to give you more hydrogen ions and the sulfate anion. So here we have an example of the sulfuric acid type of question. Sulfuric acid, as we said earlier, behaves like a mixture of a strong acid and a weak acid. So the question I asked is, calculate the pH of a 0 0.03 molar solution of sulfuric acid. Answer, the sulfuric acid is a strong acid in the first ionization, so the H plus from this alone will be 0 0.03 molar. And I show how the first association gives you bisulfate and H plus. And the, sulf the concentration of bisulfate and H plus will be 0.03 before the bisulfate starts to dissociate. Now I show the dissociation of the bisulfate anion into sulfate and more H plus. If we use an ice table, it helps to sort it all out so we can see what's happening. 0.03 at the outset from the first 100% ionization of the strong acid. Uh, at the outset, there's zero sulfate and then 0.03 molar. H plus concentration. An amount X of bisulfate dissociates so that your equilibrium condition is this. Sulfate goes from 0 to plus X so that equilibrium becomes X. And the original 0.03 has an extra X added to it so that an equilibrium is 0.03 plus X. The Ka of bisulfate, by the way, is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. So we can set up an equation showing the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants where we 
plug in all the equilibrium values, set up a trinomial, and again, it's uh, best to use the quadratic formula for solving this type of problem, because if you try to use the iterative method, it gets messy. We enter the values into the quadratic formula, we get two results, we discard the negative answer, and the result is x is equal to 7.3 times 10 to the minus 3. That's, the re that's representing the amount of H plus that is dissociated from the bisulfate. But don't forget to add it to the 0.03 that's already sitting in solution. So 0.03 plus the X gives you 0.037. When you calculate the pH, you get 1.43. So the pH of the sulfuric acid is a combination of the first dissociation and the dissociation of the bisulfate anion. If we had a more concentrated solution of sulfuric acid, you would find that the presence of the, uh, the concentrated acid suppresses the, the second dissociation enough that it doesn't put a dent in the pH. But when it's a weak solution of sulfuric acid, then the second dissociation is important enough to affect the pH.